Hey guys, welcome back. In today's video, we are talking about why shorts use tokens, how Citadel owns over $240 billion debt, the squeeze trigger, and many more in this video. First, we take a look at this. People need to understand what this means. They don't need to purchase the same security, just a like kind, which could be an AMC token. So if you take a look at the rules over here, the closeout requirement, rule 204 requires brokers and dealers that are participants of a registered clearing agency to take action to close out failure deliver positions closing out requires the broker or dealer to purchase or borrow securities of like kind and quantity so this is exactly why they want the tokens but then this is also why they want to borrow vast amount of securities as well notice here firstly the two key words used here firstly is borrow so they don't need to actually purchase the security they can borrow the securities to which then they can obviously close out the ftd and without actually having to own the security in the first place secondly is of course of like kind so anything that resembles of course the securities in which they are trying to um, settle they're trying to clear they just need something that is similar and this is why we see vast amounts of amc tokens of gme tokens because that's precisely what they use so what we have to understand is all of those ftds that's been created for amc and gme yes some may have been actually closed out some may have actually settled with real shares but it's very likely that the majority of them have been settled because of either a borrowed securities or of like kind aka the amc tokens so this whilst clearing out and setting it out the ftd it doesn't actually mean they've settled it it still obviously remains in the system because at the end of the day it isn't with something that they've purchased it isn't with something that is of course similar it's just something on the books that they can say we've cleared this but they clearly haven't and we've always talked about this but this is exactly why and just like we've said in the past these are all going to stack up in the future yes they can hide away from now yes they can continue doing this but we know that eventually the more they do this the bigger this hole gets and then the more um, impactful this situation obviously becomes and that's when they'll obviously break and we're already seeing the collapse of these brokers of these firms recently something else to take a look at it's understanding how short are also in a um, poll we can see here 65 billion dollar assets sold not yet purchased was repledged in 2023 with other debt as total assets my previous dd show citadel owes over 240 billion dollars even with hedge fund profits of 10 billion dollars a year that's 24 years to pay debt and buy iou shares and this is what we are seeing this now this is by biotech moves now we've seen his dds in the past before and some of the ones i want to remind you guys of understanding why they are in this debt is firstly understanding we we know that citadel has opened a large amount of short positions 65 billion of assets sold not yet purchased bear in mind these are numbers that are obviously given on the sheet the real numbers could obviously be way bigger for the time being we'll say that these are the real numbers is that is 65 billion dollars worth of short positions what we also have to understand is that they're using all these other assets as collaterals as a way of borrowing money and so they are also in debt because of these collaterals Furthermore, it's understanding they are taking out more loans. And of course, this adds on to the overall debt. We talked about the credit lines they opened up in the UK. We talked about the new credits um, and loans that they're taking out in the US. So we understand they are obviously borrowing money and that they are in need of money. Furthermore, and this is something that we talked about in the past before, and you can see the previous DD that Biotech talked about to talk about why they owe over 240 billion. It's because Citadel also owns other, of course, um, subsidiaries in which they have large amounts of assets not sold yet purchased and they have massive amounts of debt as well and this is why we know that citadel has an extremely over leveraged positions in certain stocks aka amc aka gme and they don't have the liquidity to obviously cover all of this in a healthy manner hence why they're continuously suppressing amc hence why they're continuously obviously borrowing more money and this is why they have their price action set for bankruptcy bk's off the table and their only hopes is for amc to default on debt 
this that is one reason why they cannot let it go higher so amc cannot raise cash so our shareholders have to do it the old-fashioned way and spend money at amc so one of the most powerful things we know about amc is understanding the investor base in itself we understand there are hundreds of thousands of people who are obviously supporting amc through the amc stocks obviously there are millions of people supporting amc through consuming um you know food and beverages from watching films at amc but just from the investor side they have hundreds hundreds of thousands of investors and of course even more than that and millions but what we also have to understand is that because the shorts know this what they're trying to do is obviously suppress amc because they know that amc will go extremely high if they don't suppress it and if amc were to go too high to the point where if they raise cash they will have to sell a minimal amount of stock to obviously raise a large amount of money and that's what they want like we talked about shorts are trapped in this play the only way for shorts to get out isn't by them covering it's by amc going to bankruptcy it's by amc getting delisted because at that point they don't have to of course cover the short positions because there won't be a short position that is existing anymore and that's what they're trying to bet on but obviously it's failing and that's why they're trying to suppress amc because they understand when amc is trying to raise money it has massive potential to raise billions of dollars which will obviously allow amc to firstly pay off debt and of course go up even higher and build up more revenue streams you can also see here another the amc trigger so this is one of the potential in understanding short squeeze from gme raises amc price so high it triggers a short squeeze on amc and now amc has enough to pay back all debt so we also know is that obviously amc with their own share ownership and of course we talked about this in the past uh, wherever it's insiders even the retail and understanding that by amc squeezing obviously it can raise a lot of money but one of the things to understand and i want to talk about that this is of course vice versa so this works both ways is how a short squeeze from gme can um sh short squeeze amc but the same can happen for a short squeeze for amc can trigger a short squeeze for gme the reason for this is because there are mutual short sellers in both gme and amc and they're using their algorithms to evenly split their resources to suppress both gme and amc now if we were to see either one to squeeze first that would mean that firstly all of the algorithms will go haywire they won't have enough money to suppress um the other stock and they will also lose out a lot of money because the other stock has squeezed and that's why both stock will squeeze and this is all we talked about with the trigger and that's why like i talked about at the end of the day you know there may be differences with gme there may be differences with amc but everyone's goal and objective at the end of the day is to beat the hedge funds and this can happen when either one of the stock squeezes because it can lead both stock to of course squeeze in the end now we, what we're also seeing right now is the bugs for gamestop today we've seen both plus 100.24 percent and minus 50.9 percent on fintel for gme very odd where we saw the price to go up to 50 dollars and where we also saw the price go down to 12 dollars for gme so this is obviously weird and why is this happening well one of the reasons is because of this reddit user claims t35 is t plus three and monday just as tuesday we may have big gme run caused by occ clearing 4 million dfv purchases so obviously talking about um roaring kitty with his 4 million purchase and this is what we are of course seeing now this is exactly why we may be looking at in terms of uh, the price uh, maybe fluctuating from 50 100 uh, percent to 50 percent and this is what we're talking about and like we talked about just earlier with if it, gme were to squeeze amc will obviously squeeze and like i said so this is still very beneficial for the amc holders as well and if you're a gme holder this is obviously um, beneficial for you as well comment down below if you guys hold on to gme or amc and this is what we're going to be looking at going into next week now this isn't and i want to clarify this this isn't to say that the squeeze will happen next week this is talking about we are expecting volatility next week because of what's happening and uh, in the indication of this is because of the price we're seeing fluctuate from 100% all the way down to negative 50%. Furthermore, what we can be looking at is the liquidity crisis for Hedgehogs. You can see Berkshire sells 1.4 billion um, of Bank of America shares. And one of the reasons for why Berkshire is selling 1.4 a is because of the fact that likely um, 
concerns over the financial stability of several banks. Buffett noted that some banks were engaging in risky behavior and misleading practices, which made their financials appear better than they were. Now, if you guys have been paying attention to the economy recently, or if you guys watch my videos, you'll know exactly what's going on. What we've talked about was how JP Morgan has already said that, and along with other banks, that their positions is extremely over leveraged. They have more um, positions that are open, which could end up in a loss than they have con uh, total equity. And even when they did a full audit on the balance sheet, even at the end, they said that our balance sheet uh, made, was made uh, to look better, but in reality, it's actually even worse, but because they didn't account for several um, different segments. And that's where we are right now. And like we talked about with banks failing, what we'll be looking at is of course the liquidity failing, and that's short running out of money as well, because they can no longer borrow money. You guys, thanks for watching. I'll catch you guys next time.